Uh, praise God, everyone, and we thank God for yet another opportunity to be in His presence, to share, and as well get to learn from what He taught us and what He prepared for us, that will always guide our spiritual being. Let's pray. Oh God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have today to hear from you and as well learn from you. May you use me as an instrument to bring your word to your people and let your word be of impact in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Amen. I'm happy that uh, we're going to have uh, something to look at I don't know what you'll have in mind, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought that we could uh, take a topic. Church as a garden or a farm that would uh, look at church, which church we know that actually is a church is a congregation of believers. So when you look at the church plus the buildings and everything that we usually congregate in as a garden or a farm, what does it actually mean? We are going to use the text in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1 to 5, which says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, I am the Lord your God. According to the doing of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do and according to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, you shall not do. Nor shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall observe my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man does, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. I, I felt that uh, thinking about these words, uh, there are some two words that uh, we should actually put in mind. If someone says Lord, what does it mean? And uh, from uh, the dictionary, they say that the Lord, this simply refers to an act in a superior way or domineering manner towards someone. So it focuses at a man of high office. That in case one is to be Lord, where God is telling us that he's actually our Lord, then means that uh, he's acting in a superior or dominating manner towards us. Meaning that uh, he's actually a person of high office. But whenever they talk about Lord, it as well points to a master that whoever is Lord to someone is as well the master. And the master is a man who has people working for him. And these are usually servants or slaves. But then he's also a person looked at as being very skilled in a particular activity or job. So that means that whenever we talk about God being Lord, he's actually a person who is very skilled in the different activities where he puts other people to work. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that everything we do in this world, we do it on God's behalf because he has actually instituted us, he has put us in those different places. And if he puts us in those different places, it means that himself, if it is a farm or if it is a garden, is the chief gardener. And if he's the chief gardener, then he's very much skilled and he knows everything that is supposed to be done in his garden. If he are to do activities in his garden, it means that we need to consult him. That's why he has told us that if you are in Egypt or if you are in those places that have been challenging you, please never behave as the people that are in those places. But at the same time, if I get you out of those challenging places and I take you somewhere, then you should also endeavor not to behave as those that you found there. Remember, he's the Lord and he knows how you're supposed to behave. So it means that wherever we go, always the contact person, the guidance will always come from, from God, who is our Lord 
who is our master. And if he's our master, then he actually dictates what should be done in his garden. God has always called us in his garden. He has called priests, he has called leaders, he has called as well the fellow Christians who he has put in different capacities. Their fathers, their mothers, their different birth positions in our home, there are those that are directors, there are those that are managers, but wherever you are, you are actually in God's garden. And in God's garden, you are just other co-farmers in his garden. And if you are co-farmers in his garden, then it means that the chief gardener, who is God, actually should always direct us on how to do his work. And if you have to do his work, it, it says that, as he has said in verse 5, that you shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man does, he shall live by them. So in case we are to come and do work in God's garden, which is actually the world which he created himself, it, it simply means that we'll have to do things the way he desires them to be done. You can never go otherwise. You can never do otherwise. It is only as he directs. And in case you do otherwise, it means that you are just in your own garden. You are just doing your own things. So my dear brothers and sisters, God calls us to work in his garden. So we are co-farmers, we are co-gardeners in his garden. Knowing or not forgetting that he's the chief gardener. And if he's the chief gardener, then he's the Lord and he's the master. Which master has been pointed to as a person who is very skilled in his duties, in his activities. So if he's very skilled in his activities, it therefore implies that as the people that are employed or as the people that are in his garden, we can only do his work perfectly in the case we inquire from him. Wherever we go, people will always behave differently. And though they behave differently, our task is simple. is to stay or to stick to the other yardstick that God gives. It is only God in his garden. And if we do as he orders, as he actually promises, that uh, in case you do, and if I don't keep my commandments, you'll always be blessed. You'll find that in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's just read it there. Deuteronomy first, chapter 28, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Him being the chief gardener, it means that we have to obey his commandment, his command. And if you obey the command that God gives in his garden, we'll always be blessed. May God bless us. May God watch over us as he gives us guidance on how to do his work in his garden. Because when we do so, we'll get the blessings. In every place where he has placed you as a leader, either in church or the different places of work, either as, as wardens, as any, anybody, as anybody in any place of Maybe he has placed wherever he has taken you. Just know that uh, you are there to do God's work. And as you do God's work, please be mindful that you can only get the blessings from God's work if you obey his commandments. You will never oppress people. You will always treat people with love. You will always treat people equally. You will always mind about other people's lives. Remember, you are not alone. And you'll only be, be of use in his garden if you see others useful in his garden. May God use you and me as we struggle to make others realize the importance and the duties that God has put in our hands. And if we do so, we'll always get the blessings. May we always learn to get the blessings because they are within. The Lord Almighty, who is the source of wisdom, who is the source 
of all the guidance that we desire in fulfilling all their the duties and responsibilities of which he is actually the expert in those activities. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.